I designed a Notion template specifically for tennis players. This is the exact system I'm going to be using to manage my tennis and track improvements throughout my series Baseline to Pro. In this video, I'll be giving you an in-depth look into everything I've included within the template, along with a tutorial of how it works. So yeah, I don't think there's anything else to say. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so this is the home page of the template. And the first thing you'll see is this dashboard. And on this dashboard is essentially your place to access all the different zones. So we've got a goal system, we have a training zone, we have match reports, a strength and conditioning tab, player loads, and food diary. And I'm gonna take you through all these different sections. And underneath this dashboard, we have a toolnet planner. And the reason why I put this on the home page is because I think it's really important every time you load this up to see when your next tournament is. And it's really important from an organizational standpoint to know when these are and the different things within them. So I'm just gonna take you through this tournament planner first, and then we'll get into the real meat of this template. As you'll see, you've got two different views. You have a tournament view and a calendar view. The tournament view is as you see right now, where it's just purely the date and the name of the tournament. And if you wanna see it in a normal calendar view, you can just click that calendar view tab and it's gonna take you to that normal format that you're probably all used to. But going back to this tournament view, um, let's just add in a new tournament and you can see what happens. So all you have to do is just press new and then you can put in that tournament. So let's just say um, new tournament. And then what you can do is you can just press the date and you can just pick the start date of the tournament. So let's just go for the 12th and then click the end date and let's say that ends, it's two day tournament, so it's gonna end on the 14th. You do that, and then you've got the date in there, and then all we need to do is click on the tournament template. This is gonna load all the most important things that you need to do to plan tournaments. So you've got the link to the tournaments, the tournament address, where it is, um, the entry deadline and withdrawal deadline. It's always important to know when those things are, the amount of times where I've forgotten to withdraw from a tournament or enter in time. So having that on the home page of the template is gonna be so useful for, um, as I said before, an organizational standpoint. Underneath this, you can just do a little checklist of things. So you can put the first item as withdraw from tournament. If you're traveling abroad, it might be something like book flight by a certain date. And then once you've done that, you can tick them off and then you're all good. And then you can put some notes underneath something like location is far from the venue, whatever you want. This is just your place to plan your tournaments, pick which one you want to play and just store some information on there and just stay organized. Okay, so I'm not gonna start with the goal sheet. I'm gonna start with the training zone and then match reports, because as you'll see, you need to have these filled out in order to create your goal sheet. Okay, so in the first section of the training zone, we have what I've called coaching advice. And this is basically your database to put down any advice that you've been given from your coaches, anything that you think that you need to improve on yourself, anything you've learned from YouTube or anywhere else that you've got information on how to improve your tennis. So to create a new piece of advice, you just press new at the bottom and then you put in the piece of advice. So let's just do one, for example, of load back leg on serve, okay? and then you need to put down your priority for it. So how important is this in your training? Is it something that could be improved later on? It's not necessarily right now. Is it something that needs to be improved right now to make you a better player? So for this, for me, I'm gonna put this as a high priority and then automatically it's gonna be put up with the other high priority sections. And then the area of my game, it is on my serve and I've added that today. You have two different views. You have this full table view that you can see right here or you have this board view. And I personally prefer this board view because you can really see all aspects of your game and all the different advice that you've been given and what you really need to work on right now. If you go back to the full table and you feel like you've completed and you don't really need to think about it anymore and you've done it, so I'm much better at staying side on during my serve now, you click done and then it will go to the bottom of the list. It doesn't delete it because it's always important to still see it there. I think it's important to really have a full database of everything that you've been told and you've improved in your game. But if you go back to board view, it's not gonna be there anymore on your serve. And on the board view, it's only the current stuff that you're working on. Okay, moving down, we have your session scores. And this is basically a place where you can keep track of how hard you're trying, your effort, your focus, your resilience within your training sessions. And you just give yourself a score out of 10 for how hard you try basically. It's quite easy to go through the motions whilst you're training but the best players in the world are really gonna be pushing their best every session. So you really wanna have a score higher than eight or nine every single time. So if I put in a new session, this is gonna be my entry number 13 now. Um, do it on today. Let's just say I had tennis. Um, I gave my score a six. 
Moving down even further, we have a section called tennis tests. And these are basically measurable exercises that you do within your training and that you can measure your improvement by. For example, I've put down 11 different types of exercises that you can use, or you can add your own if you want, or adjust them. It's completely customizable up to you once you download it. But this exercise is called 60 serves, and it's essentially where you have 60 serves to knock down a ball can wide body and T on each side, and you've got to see how many serves you do it by. So in this first serve section here, when I did it on the 13th of February, I only knocked down three cans, and this is wide body T and then T body wide. But when I did it on my next attempt, I knocked them all down and I did it in 40 balls. And then you can keep doing this and see how you're improving. And I've tried to include all the different areas of your game. So we have your serve, your return, the baseline and the net play. And I've provided some of the exercises that I do within those different gameplay areas. For example, in baseline, we have one called depth scores and I've put the date that I've done it and I've put my score for the do side and I put my score for the add side and it gives me an average between the two and then that's my final score. And then the idea is that you'll do this over time, similar exercises, you can see if you're improving them or you're not improving them and then you can adjust your training accordingly and make informed decisions on what you do within your training. Okay, so the next section we're gonna look at is match reports and this is my favorite section within the whole template. So if we go on to here, this is where you can put in every single match that you've played, your result, your score, and put in all the statistics from the match that you have. And I think this is a great way to really see what needs improving within your tennis. So if we look at this first entry that I've done, we've got the date, we've got the result, the score, the opponent UTR. Um, you're going to put in the opponent name, but for this YouTube video, I've taken them out. You've got your tournament and you've got your round. Okay, so that's just the general information from your match. I've split up the statistics into many different areas. And this full view, you can scroll across and you can see your statistics for everything. But I've also split it up where you can just see certain statistics and you can compare them across your matches. So if we just skip to performance scores, this is where you're gonna have the general information first. That's the same for all the different views. But then we have the mental score and the performance score. The mental score is similar to the session score that I spoke about before. And this is where you just rate yourself out of 10 on the mental side, where it's your routines, breathing, your focus, your resilience, etc. And for all the different types of statistics, if you just hover over this information bar here, it's gonna give you a little bit more detail of what you need to include in that section example over here and then we can go on to performance score where you just rate yourself out of 10 for how well you think the match went. If you go through to the different tabs it's very similar. You've got your first serve percentage, your first serve points won, double faults etc and I've tried to include all the different types of statistics that I think are the most important to gather from a match and what I think is really cool about this you see these green progress bars you can set your target for what you want to achieve. For example my first serve points won my target here is 75%. Now, this is adjustable. So let's say you want your target to be 60%. All you need to do is click on this, edit property, scroll down and change the 75, for example, to 60, for example. And then your progress bars will adjust. So then 64% is higher than 60 and you've exceeded your target. And when you're scrolling through your match reports, you can see where you're meeting your targets and where you're not meeting your targets. And again, you can really inform your training of what needs to be improved. So we've got returns, we've got winners, forced errors statistics, and we've got a ratio here of your winners and forced errors to unforced errors. Um, ideally, you want this to be greater than one. I've set a really tough target of three for myself here. Um, we have your important points, so first point conversion and game point conversion. Now, obviously you have to put in your own statistics. This is just a place to gather your statistics, not actually get your statistics, if you know what I mean. Um, if you have no statistics to put in, this page is still useful because if you click on the entry number, let's go back to this number one here, you're gonna be able to see all this stuff, but you can also have a section to put in your pre-match plan, your post-match report, and a linked view of your coaching advice. So whilst you're filling this out, doing your match description and you feel like, oh, my first serve was too inconsistent and you think of why, you go straight to the coaching advice and put in release ball at eye level and it's automatically there. And then if we go back to our training zone, it shows up in your coaching advice section. 
So I think that's a pretty cool way of staying organized with what you need to improve. If you have enough data within your training zone and your match reports, you're gonna be able to set really good measurable goals. Okay, so if we go into this goal section now and we click here, I've split the goals up into four different zones. And the idea of this is kind of think of this as a sort of like a pyramid. At the top, you have the reason why you're playing tennis, your why. And then you have your performance goals, which are essentially results-based goals. And then you have your improvement goals, and then you have your process goals at the bottom. And the idea is that if you really get the bottom of the pyramid good, then everything else is gonna take care of itself. So if we start at the top of this pyramid, you're gonna put down your why, and this is your reason for playing tennis. And for me, that's to enjoy and become the best player that I can be. So if we go down to performance goals now, um, I've put reach the final round qualifying in the futures and get a win against a UTR 12. The goal within the time period of the next three months is to do this once for each of them. So if I do that, I just need to put one in the score section and then it will show up as completed. And then the goal will no longer be active. I turn it to inactive and then it goes into the old goal section. Goals that are no longer active will appear in this section and you can go back and look at them, see if you completed it, how close you got, etc. And then when you go back into your current goals, you're only gonna be able to see what is currently happening. Now, if we go down to improvement goals, this links back to your match database and your training zone. A good way to do this would be to have a look at your match statistics, see what you're lacking, and then go into your training zone and see what tennis tests apply to what you need to improve. So for example, if your first serve percentage in your matches isn't high enough, you go to the first serve section of your tennis test and you wanna get those a little bit better. So if we look at this goal here, it's get 70% on the first serve mix-up game. So at the moment, my high score is currently 43. So I'm 61% of the way there to achieve my goal. Now, if we go down to the bottom of that pyramid, we've got your process goals. And these are stuff that you're gonna do on a daily basis to try and reach your improvement goals. So keep on that serve theme that I mentioned. I've put down, do my serve program three times. Now for these process goals, I've put the time period as one week. And so the goal is to do it three times. So Every time I do it, I can fill it out and I can see how close I'm getting to complete my goal. And then once I've completed my goal, it'll say completed. And what I like about this is that normal goal sheets go on for a long period of time. For the first week or so, you're very motivated. And then after a certain amount of time, you kind of forget about it. And then you don't really think about your goals again. With this system that I've made here, really got to be accountable for yourself on a weekly basis. Can I complete my process goals each week? You're going to see that you're improving. And then you can see if you're getting closer to your improvement goals. And then this should hopefully help you reach your performance goals. To try and keep the image of that pyramid, what I've done at the end of this database is you can link your goals to the goal section above. So for my serve one, um, that's gonna link to improving getting 70% on the first serve mix-up game. So then I come to here, I scroll down and then it links to there. And then this is gonna link to my performance goal. And then at the end, this links to your why. Okay, so if we go back to that homepage now, those are the main three sections, and I think those are the stuff that you're gonna be using quite often, but I've also included an extra three tabs. So we've got a tab for strength and conditioning, and in here you can put in your different sessions. I've put in mine, my warm-up, recovery, injury prevention, strength, speed, power, and conditioning, the different exercises that I'm currently doing. And within there, you can store the history of your reps and loads. If I go into my rows for my strength, you can put in the date, which is the 1st of March for me, you could put in your reps, so I did three to five, and then you can put your load. So obviously I did 200 kg rows, for example. And again, it's just a way to see if you're improving within your exercises and just not go through the motions with your training. Okay, the next tab is your player loads. So the way loads are set up is you do your duration of your session times by your rate of perceived exertion. So that's basically how hard did you think the session was out of 10. So for Monday, for example, my first session was tennis. It was 90 minutes long and I felt like it was a seven out of 10 toughness. And then the formula will figure out what your load was for that day. And then at the end of the week, you will get your total load for the week over here. In order for this to work, you need three weeks worth of loads to start with. And then once you've done that, you can put your load for this week, your load for one week ago, your load for two weeks ago, and it's gonna create that load ratio. And basically, if it's close to one, it means that you're training at a consistent intensity. 
if it's a lot greater than one, it means that your recent load has been a lot higher than your previous loads. And if it's a lot less than one, it means that you've trained a lot less in the last week compared to your historic loads. Also down here, we have your energy tracker. So this is where you can track your hours and like in the match statistics, you can set your target. So for me, I've put my target as eight here, um, but you can set that for what you want, put in your energy, your mood, and then you can keep track of it on a weekly basis down here. And you can see how it changes over time. Okay, so the final section here is the food diary. I think this page is great for older players where the responsibility to create nutritious meals is on themselves. Um, we have a way to create and plan meals for the week up at the top. And then at the bottom, you can create a whole database of all the different meals that you know and the recipes to create them. And I think it's also a great way for parents to create a whole massive database of all the meals that they know that they could pass on to their kids once they get a bit older. If we look on the meal, for example, I don't know, let's go for egg fried rice. You can create a new recipe and then there's a space to put in the ingredients and the method of how to make it. So this kind of covers every aspect of Tennis Player OS. And as I said before, I created this for myself because I wanted a system that encompassed all these different areas. And I really think this is gonna help me improve much quicker with my tennis.